whipped North Melbourne fans into a frenzy early. And the Blue and White Brigade's cheer squad were firing. Go Corey, we all love you. I just feel really sick and so does everybody else actually. Go Rewise! Nine hours before the first bounce and it was clear this was more than a sporting stoush. This was Melbourne versus Sydney, and the rivalry only intensified as the big game approached. Some tried every trick in the book to confuse the newcomers. Oh, excuse me, mate. Sorry, but there's no game today. It's been no game today. The MCG had become a carnival by the time almost 2,000 people were sitting down to the traditional North Melbourne breakfast. AFL Chief Executive Ross Oakley was presented with the Football Personality of the Year Award, while Eddie Maguire received one for Best Media Personality. Uh, what a better way to celebrate the centenary today with North Melbourne and Sydney. Of course, it could be better if Collingwood was playing, but anyway, I can't have everything. By midday, North Melbourne superstars began arriving. Their Sydney rivals came en masse, with the coach doing his best to sound calm. That's fine, so the boys can just go out and enjoy the day. John Howard certainly was. Bob and Blanche were looking forward to their day, while Bob Carr joked that he was just an ordinary punter. I bought our tickets off a scalper. Bob Pratt, the sole survivor of the Swans' last premiership team in 1933, didn't need to do that. As an official guest of the AFL, he went in style. And what a sight. In ideal weather conditions, an expected crowd there to witness the first grand final between Sydney and North since the competition began. In backyards and pubs across Australia, families and friends fired up the barbecue and sat down to watch the historic match. Sydney fans tuned in from a distance and were no less excited. There were sporting tributes to stars past and present, but it was football these fans had come to see, and they weren't disappointed by the warm-up.